What's going on everybody? LK here. Back at it again with another Guilty Year video. And today, this is another kind of basic introduction to Guilty Year video. And it's a pretty important one. It's about defense. So, in this game, uh, so if you're here from Dragon Ball, right? Guilty Year has passive defensive options. Dragon Ball does not have such passive defensive options. Dragon Ball has committal strong but committal defensive options guilty gear has passive defensive options and that's the only thing i want to talk about today so there's basically three types of guard that you could do in guilty gear so let's do this right so this is the normal guard that you're quite familiar with already but you can also ib it's called instant block which we call ib right and you could fd faultless defense these two other options have very, very different uses and different effects. So using them well really, really helps with defense. So for starters, let's talk about instant block first, because that's usually the one that people get pretty focused on since you don't do it normally. Like, So instant block, when you block a move, right before you block it, you let go and tap down back or back depending on whether or not it is uh, low or a high, right? So just like this. You can see the lever there. Just me doing it. Now instant block sounds pretty nice when you hear the base of what it does. So. The main things is that you reduce the pushback and you reduce how much frame advantage they have. So there are moves that maybe on normal guard you would not be able to punish, but on instant block you can counter, move first, punish them, whatever. Now faultless defense is the opposite. So they go farther away, but you give them more frame advantage. So the trade-off usually is... Uh, Faultless defense, you just want to get them off you. Instant block, you're usually looking to create a gap and punish the gap in some fashion. Now, FD, you just do by holding two buttons, right? And the meter gain I have here is actually set it to a little bit less. Okay, so it actually drains pretty quickly. So you have to be pretty careful. You can't just hold it. You have to kind of use it at the right spots. But you do it by just pressing buttons. If you want to practice instant blocking, I recommend just doing simple strings like this. What's nice about Guilty Gear is that you, you can't really delay your Gatlings that much. So let's say if you're here as a Dragon Ball player, or maybe like a Blazeman player or something, Street Fighter player, whatever. In uh, some games, you can delay a lot. You can delay a lot. So Soul is actually a character that can kind of delay his stuff like that. But most characters, like say Milia, like see, I'm, I'm pressing the button but not getting anything. But if I do it right away, I get it. So instant block is a little bit stronger in this game because you can count on like moves coming out. It's just like not common for people to be able to delay a ton. So it's pretty easy to practice instant block in this game. Once you start getting it down, then I have a couple of recommendations of when to use it and when to not use it. So for example, does Soul even have a move like this? Oh, he does. Okay. So he does. So, okay. So this is Grand Viper. One thing about instant block is I recommend if you're trying to instant block a move that's multiple hits, don't instant block the first hit. <laughs> really try not to instant block the first hit. Since you're letting go of the stick, that might happen. Since you try to instant block the first hit, you're not blocking, the first hit hits you, then you get hit. Wait for the first couple of hits to connect and then, then like go from there. If you miss it, okay, whatever, it happens. But try to do it after, after, after you start blocking, not before. If you miss instant block, there's a small, uh, it's called lockout, so it won't affect you at the start, but it will affect you later uh, if you're trying to like es escape pressure a certain way. 
since I missed the first instant block, I was trying to instant block the whole time, but I was locked out. It's only 30 frames, but those situations do come up, and in those spots, you're not going to be able to take back frame advantage. So once you get good at instant blocking, you want to selectively use it. You don't want to just instant block everything. Instant blocking everything looks cool, but like anything else on defense, context is really important, and picking the right spot to instant block something does much more than just instant blocking everything. An easy example here would be Soul. So since we have him out here, right? Let's do Okay. And what what will we make recording number? Yeah, recording number two. Actually I'm gonna make something that no one will ever do. Okay. So the thing is, here we have here we have a string into Grand Viper and a string into Bandit Revolt, right? So if I try to instant block first hit, like, okay. If I try to instant block Bandit Revolver like that, actually, even have some Gunflame. Oh, uh, sorry. It's not Gunflame. Grand Viper, even have some Grand Viper. I'm going to miss the, the instant block window. See, see how I got nothing? I can't instant block because I was trying to instant block another move and I was locked out. So, again, instant block everything is cool, but context is really important. If you don't instant block that bandit revolver, he pretty much gets his turn again and you have to sit there again. Now, for FD, there's not that much to say. You really just try to use it to push them out. Right? There are cases where you'll be able to punish if you if you FD everything. Right? But generally, uh, it depends on your character, of course. So for Milia, I just run away. For, if you play like Kai or something, you might be able to poke out, use a special move, something. You'll have to test with your character. The main thing about FD and the reason why you want to apply it well is it's just expensive. And meter is really precious in the game. So you want to pick what moves you want to push people out on. Generally, when they're close up, that's what you're looking for. But some characters have moves that like, oh, if they do it, you just want to push them out. Some characters, so Millie is one of them, the general strategy is just to push them out. Other characters, like say Soul, like this string right here, you, you want to push him back on the lights because he has a command grab. Right, so that he then that way he'd have to like run up to you to do command grab rather than just kicking you point blank. There's little things like that that you have to go in the lab and mess around with, or ask people, or watch videos, or whatever. But as a summary, right, get your instant blocking down. That one you have to actually practice doing. You don't want to instant block everything over time, but when you're practicing it, when you're practicing it, you want to get used to just doing it multiple times. Then in matches, after you get used to doing it, you start being like, oh, I want to instant block with this move specifically or something. As far as spotless defense, since it's not technical, you can, from the start, just try to focus on pushing them out while not using too much meter. All right, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Like and subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.